with love and gratitude i offer myself for the divine lotus feet of our dearest loving lord bhagwan shri satya sai baba who is sarva devata tita swarupa so dear brothers and sisters loving sai ram to all of you i wish all of you a happy and holy mahashivaratri filled with love peace and divine bliss so we are really blessed and fortunate to be the contemporaries of this living kali yuga avatar bhagwan shri satya sai baba in his infinite love and compassion swami has revealed his divinity in his discourse in 19 68 in may 17th 1968 in the first world conference in mumbai swami has revealed who he is he said this is the human form in which all the divine names and forms attributed by man to god are manifest that means he is embodiment of all divine forms this is not just a saying it has over the many decades many people have seen in swami the vision of shiva shakti shiva shakti buddha jesus rama krishna hanuman viraka many forms and names so swami all names and forms are in him so i would say all in one and he is the one in all he is the indweller of all the beings in the world that is why we say also he is all in all and ultimately he is beyond all i addressed him as sarva devata atita swarupa means sarva devata swarupa means embodiment of all divine forms sarva devata atita swarupa means beyond all the divine names and forms there was a devotee by name pedabottu she was a devotee of baba she wrote some composed some words on swami's glory how wonderful he is how is shiva she wrote at the end sarva devata swarupa that means embodiment of all divine names next day she comes to continue that then she sees it is changed to sarva devata atita swarupa that is he is beyond all the divine names and forms that is why we say he is all in one one in all all in all and beyond all i want to share with you the few words significance of mahashivaratri what swami and the scriptures have said because this is a very special night shivaratri for people who don't know shiva means auspicious it is an auspicious night and it's not just an auspicious night maha shivaratri the greatly auspicious night so every month you get shivaratri every month you get what called masa shivaratri on the 14th day of the krishna paksha the uh, the moon wanes and that is called masa shivaratri but once a year in the month of magha comes this maha shivaratri it is very very important for spiritual seekers because for us mind is the cause for bondage and liberation this is the day the moon is we bit very small so it is easy to get in tune with god as swami beautifully says mind is like a key so you turn to one side what happens if the lock it locks the other side unlocks same thing the mind we turn towards god it gives a joy liberation turns towards the world it gives grief and bondage so this is the day easiest to turn towards god that is why spiritual seekers all over the world you go to any shiva uh, temple all over the world grandly and joyously celebrate this day as maha shivaratri because lord shiva is called maheshwara the supreme lord and also called mahadev devonke dev is the supreme godhead so that is why this day is celebrated as maha shivaratri there are three things which are attributed for this day this is the day he did the tandava dance so that one of the songs you heard bhajan that is why you can relate to that ananda tandava sada shiva with bliss he danced that is why he is also called nataraja and also we say nacho bolanath so just 
dance that is his beautiful he's the greatest dancer because the whole world is cosmic dance that even the atomic particle there is a dance so he is the source of all cosmic dance and second important significance of mahashivaratri is this is the day the lord shiva gifted to the humanity the lingam lingodbhava because god is beyond name form attributes space and causation is beyond all that nirguna nirakara but for the sake of our redemption god gave us a form that is the linga that is why in all the shiva temples they don't worship the form of lord shiva but the linga itself which is the representative the supreme godhead that is the another special thing about this day swami said lingam is the definition is liyate gamyate it lingam so everything merges in the lingam and everything goes towards the lingam so because it is beyond in a specific form so everything merges liyate gamyate that is the thing everything in the world merges so there are many types of lingas some are made of stone like this is stone this is swami materialized and then some are made up of sand some of made up of wood and some are made up of special uh, metal like iron or steel but there are two special lingams one is this hiranyagarbha lingam which swami brought about from 1999 and then he did it for few years it comes from him and he says this is permeated by love this is the source of divine love and every one of us has it on the right side in our spiritual heart which permeates all our body every one of us here so you can go to the discourse and read it please 1999 shivaratri time but shiva avatar when he comes he can crystallize the divine love into something and that is hiranyagarbhalinga that is very special and second one is the spatikalingam that is uh, made of crystal it symbolizes purity this is also swami gave importance like in chidambaram where natraja is there 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 is akashlingam so there is what is called this spatikalingam was put by adi shankara the great master he did that so there are various types of lingas so we should know when because for shiva that is very important but there are five lingas called pancha bhuta lingas it is not only it needed to be in the form of a lingam but five elements could be in the form of lingas like space akasha in chidambaram there is a thing akash lingam just space and in shri kalas there is another famous place there is a thing vayu lingam just air that's all that is a lingam so you can't uh, see and third is in arunachala you were, were singing arunachala she oh there agni lingam the fire itself is a lingam fire just fire that is a fire lingam and in their place called jambukeshwara near uh, trichi they have got jala lingam water itself is a lingam and in kanjipuram there is another place in tamil nadu it is called putvi lingam so just five elements themselves become lingas so it doesn't need to be in this so different ways the concept and finally swami says brahmanda that means the whole universe itself is like a lingam so that is uh, the various manifestations of lingas and third thing is this is the day this is called parvati kalyanam so mother parvati got married to lord shiva but in the higher spiritual sense mother parvati represents nature and shiva represents the brahman purushan prakruti so it is the melting of the purushan prakruti that's why even vishnu you say vishnu is separate lakshmi pa- brahma saraswati but for lord shiva is called ardhanash narishwara in the left parvati vama bhagam he was chanting so left side of lord shiva is mother that means the nature the mother nature and the lord has come together that is why swami says as long as we think god is separate nature is separate jiva is separate we will never be happy so we should see there is only one thing exists god nature and man are one. so that is the 
special significance of this maha shivaratri so we should when you celebrate you should know spiritual significance that is why swami says don't make it ritual whatever ritual we do you should know the significance and today another thing people watch two things they people watch vigil and fast people we all are going to be uh, hopefully awake throughout the night and most of us don't eat supposed to have liquids but people do it ritually ritualistic so you should know the spiritual significance this fasting is called upavasa that means staying close to god it is not really fasting food the real people fast because they are so absorbed in the divine bliss of thinking about lord shiva they forget about their food and sleep because for most of us human beings what is dear good food or food and second is good sleep we all want to have a good sleep here something which is dear to us food and sleep you sacrifice for the lord because lord is he sacrificed for us that is why he called hala hala dari for the sake of the humanity he drank the poison which really kept in his thing garla khanta so when he did that at least we can sacrifice little things but this should be by source not by force so i mean if you are fasting or oh, when i am going to break the fast when i am going to eat it is better to eat and think about him rather than fast and think about the food the same thing the sleep so you should come naturally you are so much happy thinking about the lord naturally you forget about the food and sleep that is another thing which comes with this second thing we must be seeing three things we are doing this rudram four times a night this is called praharas there are four praharas or four jamus they call the scriptures prescribe you need to do the rudra abhishekam during these four times in the night so the whole day is divided into eight praharas in the night is four we did one now we are going to do second and there will be third and then, then the fourth this is very auspicious but when we chant rudram i think lot of you know rudram so this is the most powerful because it's called rudra upanishad there are vedas are the scriptures they are breath of god but rudram of them is the most powerful of all the uh, hymns actually it is there in the krishna yajurveda in the middle of krishna yajurveda you find this rudram that is why it is called rudra upanishad shatarudriyam rudra prashna sri rudram many names are given but it is mainly sings the glory of lord shiva it has two components one is namakam another is chamakam namakam is 11 anuvakas chamakam is also 11 anuvakas the significance of the 11 swami beautifully said we are all having problems with 11 things one is five karmendriyas five organs of action and five jnanendriyas five organs of perception and one the eleven thing is mind so these things distract us causes agitation and pain so these eleven when you turn towards god we live in bliss and peace the same thing this turns toward the world it causes bondage pain and suffering so all this rudram teaches is turn your mind towards god and as i said this rudra upanishad is the most important of all the vedas they say it is not only gives you uh, highest which is liberation but even it gives you worldly pleasures physical mental it gives you all prosperity that's why there is one part called chamakam where god gives you all the boons but on this rudram the eighth anuvaka is the most important it is like the life force for the rudram this is where hara hara we are going to chant that in, during the uh, namakam you should remember that eighth anuvaka is the most important on the eighth anuvaka why is it is important because the greatest powerful mantra om namah shivaya panchachari mantra is there in that eighth anuvaka that is the greatest gift to human kind and of the om namah shivaya shiva the two letter word is the one 
which uses the liberation. That is why the power of that Om Namah Shivaya. You are going to watch a video where Swami himself chants this Panchachari Mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, which we can uh, follow. That is the power of Rudram. But when we chant Rudram, we should know the meaning. In the Namakam, people think this is the greatest Advaitic treatise. People talk about socialism, communism. This is where God shows everything is equal. So you go, even you have, actually you can practice Rudram in the morning to evening. He says Rudram, he says, when you see a plant, that is Lord Shiva. When you see a branch, that is Lord Shiva. Leaves, Lord Shiva. Garden, Lord Shiva. Forest, Lord Shiva. And you are traveling, you see the stones on the way. Or you see the hill. You see the mountains, that is all Lord Shiva. And you see water, pool of water, that is Lord Shiva. Lake, and a waterfall, and a river, ocean, that is all Lord Shiva. And you see a dog, and the hunting dog. He says even Shabyabo, Shabyapati Yonama means hunter, hunting dog, and the one who takes the hunting dog. That is also, the, and then finally it comes to human beings. All saintly beings are Lord Shiva. Then he says, Taskaram Patiya, he is the greatest thief. So all the thieves, whenever they say, don't worry, he is the, salute them, they are Rudras. And he says, Vanchate Parivanchate, he is the greatest cheater, and the master cheater too. So whenever cheats, say, okay, Lord Shiva, you are cheating me. So he wants you to see Lord in the everything. He is the carpenter, he says, describes that. And he is the one who hurts the, uh, hunts the birds and goes uh, fish, fish, fisherman. So all kinds of things, manifestations are nothing but whether it is the plants, whether the inanimate stones, rather whether the animals or the different types of human beings, that is all nothing but manifestation of Rudra. That is the experience we should have. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, whatever you see, Sarvam Shivamayam, that kind of experience we have, then everything, nothing bothers you whether you come across a thief. Actually says, the one who is a charioteer, like the car you are driving, that is Shiva. The one who is the driving the car, somebody is taking you, Shiva. If you see that, nothing will bother, nothing will affect us. Because Shiva, you are thinking of all the time. That is the power of uh, Rudram. Because when you chant that, so right away the Lord Shiva is embedded in that. So when you are doing the Rudram, we do the Abhishekam. So I want you to know, which it's not mechanical, we said we do four times. When do the Abhishekam, that means that is the one is the most dear to Lord Shiva is Abhishekam. We do, in, the, in general, five things. First we put uh, milk, and this is represents the earth. And then we put curd. It represents the five element, the water. Then we put the ghee, that is clarified butter, and this represents fire, element fire. All these elements are, and honey. You put honey, and that represents the element of um, wind, vayu. So like that, all the five elements with which you worship the Lord Shiva. And then the sugar we put. This is called panchamruta. So the milk, curd, ghee, honey, and the uh, sugar. So that is what, but there are so many things they do the Abhishekam to the Lord Shiva. Like we put the um, Basma, that is Vibhuti. And sometimes you put Kumkum, sometimes you took sandal paste, put turmeric, sugarcane water, coconut water, and uh, with the gold leaves people do the Abhishekam. So there are so many types they do with the flowers, with the fruits, Durva grass, so many ways we do the Abhishekam because this is most dear to Lord uh, Shiva. And another thing we might have seen, we do is this Basma, the Vibhuti. Because Vibhuti is very dear to Lord Shiva. That is why Basma Bhushitanga Sai Chandra Shekara we sing. So that Shiva always adorned with these holy ashes. Because that is a sign of renunciation, Vairagya. Because he does, he doesn't, he lives in a cremation ground, puts this Vibhudhyan is very happy. But this basma is something which cannot be changed further. That is the ultimate result of all things. God, 
in the form of Shiva helps us to destroy our desires. That is why he is called uh, man, man, Manohara. So just he destroys the desires because there is an obstacle for us. Second thing is we chant the Lingashtakam. There we chanted Ravana Darpa Vinashaka Lingam. He destroyed the pride of Ravana because ego is another greatest obstacle. Ravana was great devotee of Shiva, but he was very egoistic. Oh, I am the great devotee. That is also greatest pride is spiritual pride. I think I am a great devotee. I can watch Vigil. I can do this. I know Rudram. Those are all dangerous signs. So just humility. So that second thing he destroyed. Third also in the Lingashtam we say, Dachyasu Yajna Vinashaka Lingam. Dachya, he hated Lord Shiva because of his ignorance. So when you think of Basma, you think of three things. He destroys desires, he destroys our ego, he destroys the hateful feelings. Because these are all the obstacles. That is why you need to need the spiritual significance, then you understand what this significance of Maha Shivaratri is. And another thing I want to tell you, we were going on putting this uh, Bilwa leaf, right? So this is the trifoliate, three parts for this leaf. So we chanted the Bilva Stotram. So what did it say? Tridalam. Tridalam means three trifoliate, three leaves. And Trinetram. She says three eyes. Because one is the jnana eye. And another is Trishula Dharam. So the one the trident he wears. So it is the most significant. All the three trinities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara are supposed to be in the Bilva leaf. That is why it is so dear to Lord Shiva. So, but finally Swami says, you should go beyond the three gunas. That is what the worship with the Bilva leaf is. But finally, I would like to conclude because there is no story of God complete without the stories of his devotees. So I want to say, first, the greatest devotee of Lord Shiva is who? Nandi. That is why Nandi, Shwara, He, Nataraja, we sing that. Nandi, what is the uniqueness of Nandi? So, when any temple you go, Lord Shiva's temple, just yes, Nandi just will be looking at only our Lord Shiva. He doesn't look this side, that side, anybody else. Only one pointed eye only towards Lord Shiva, nothing else. Similarly, we want to, as spiritual seekers, only one pointed love towards beloved Lord. Second thing is, whenever Lord Shiva was moving about, how does he go? He goes on the top of the Nandi. Rushabha Vahana, we also sing one of the bhajans. So he always wants to serve the Lord Shiva. So for us also, if you want to have spiritual advancement, spiritual progress, two things are needed. One is one-pointed focus on God. And second thing is to be able to have that longing to serve the Lord. So this is the example of Nandi. So that is why there are temples even for Nandi. There are big temples, uh, Nandi I have seen in Nepal, in even Andhra Pradesh, Mahanandi temple, because Nandi itself is considered so close to Lord Shiva. There is a big book called Periya Puranam. You should read that Periya Puranam is 63 Shaivite saints. They are called nine arts. There are lots of great saints. We don't have time to go that. But this one, you should all know about it. There is another great man, saint in the same book called Pusla. Because we are doing these rituals, I want to say, this man is such a great devotee, he wants to build a temple for Shiva. Some of you all also want to build a temple for Swami and different places. So he wanted, but he didn't have enough money. He tried to get money, no money. So then he didn't know, he was disappointed. But he thought, okay, let me build a temple. So in his heart he worshipped, and he put a foundation stone in his heart. Then another day he put brick, another brick. So if he was doing that, he finished the temple in his heart. Meanwhile, the king of that uh, near town, he was building a beautiful temple of Lord Shiva. He finished the beautiful temple. So they chose a date, the king chose a date to install the deity. So this auspicious time they choose. Then Lord Shiva comes and tells him in the dream, no, 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 I can't come on the day. You need to postpone the date to sell, tell the king. Because my another devotee is building the temple, I need to go to him, that Pusla. 
So this king was my God in my kingdom. Who is that man that who could build a temple better than me? I'm the king. Who is that guy? I want to go. Because Lord Shiva tells him, postpone the date. So he goes there to the village. This, who is this guy? Puslar, where is he? I want to see the temple he built. He goes, sir, we don't know any temple. The village people say, no, no, I want to meet. The Lord Shiva told me there is a temple. Then he goes, Puslar. Puslar was shocked. He was crying. So he built a temple in the heart. Sir, I didn't build any physical temple. I built a temple in the heart, a foundation stone. He falls, the king falls flat at the feet of this Pusla. You are the real Shiva devotee, not me who build the building with the mortar, cement, and bricks and stones. That is what Swami wants us to have. There is Manasa Bhajare Guru Charna. We worship him in the heart, build a temple in the heart. This all helps us to go towards that. Ultimately, the most highest worship is mental worship. That is why they say Pradhamam Pratima Puja. First step is doing the worship to the Madhyamam Japastotradikam. Next step is we sing the bhajans. Uttamam Manasi Puja. Best is mental worship. Mentally you worship everything. Soham Puja Uttama Uttamam. Finally, you come to the stage by doing this, I am that, I am Shivoham, I am the Lord Shiva. That is the ultimate. By doing all this, we need to realize that. So I pray to the Lord Shiva, Sai Shiva, to bless all of us with love and purity so that we can realize that truth in this very lifetime. Jai Sairam.